Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to start by thanking Aegis for giving me an opportunity to be part of this Congress. There's been a dire need of minimally access surgery in developing countries. And it gave me such a pleasure that in this Congress, we'll be addressing development and sustenance of minimally invasive surgery in emerging countries. My name is Dr. Joseph Njagi. I'm a gynecologist and um, laparoscopic surgeon. And today I'll be discussing fertility enhancing laparoscopic surgeries. Greetings from laparoscopy machinani. I have no declaration to make. And the outline of my presentation, we'll look at introduction, some of the indication for minimally accessed surgery in enhancement of fertility. This will include athesions, tubal pathology, tubectomy reversal, ectopic pregnancy, fibroid. I've just put cystectomy, ovarian drilling, and endometriosis as much as I'm not going to talk about these three topics. There's an emerging debate on if there's any role in enhancement of fertility. Of course, we know ovarian drilling has almost no role and it will be unfair if I don't mention endometriosis, but because of the scope of our presentation today, we will not get into um, deep uh, discussion of endometriosis, but I'll just mention a slide and what is the current um, uh, belief in um, endometriosis. So historically, we know that uh, the diagnostic procedures were performed uh, laparoscopically, but there's been advancement and improvement on um, minimally invasive surgery where now various reproductive disorders are not only diagnosed laparoscopically, but treated laparoscopically. So therefore, it means that laparoscopy would remain to be an important management of infertility. As much as we had development in minimally accessed surgery, we have found that there's been development in assisted reproductive technology, non-invasive diagnostic tool have also improved, which has led to the bypassing of diagnostic histolaparoscopy procedure where now um, uh, clinicians are proceeding directly to uh, assisted reproductive technology. Now the question therefore remains, is therefore a role in laparoscopic surgery in enhancing fertility in a society whereby you know, ART technologies have greatly improved. Now let's look at some of the indication therefore. Pelvic adhesions has been found to impair fertility by disrupting normal tubal ovarian relationship. There's reduced ovum pickup in cases of adhesion. And laparoscopy has been found to be the gold standard or um, offer definitive diagnosis for adhesion. And in 26% of cases of previous surgery, there's been found to be um, quite a remarkable adhesion. And in contrary, we found that there's less risk of adhesions when procedures have been performed laparoscopically. And in terms of treatment for adhesions, it's been clearly indicated that for patients who undergo adhesion treatment, 45% of the group will conceive as compared to untreated group where the, um, the conception rate will be about 16%. This is a patient who presented to us after a single open myomectomy. And you can really appreciate this great and dense adhesion where you're not really able to appreciate the adenoxia. The bowel is stuck to the uterus. Now, if you see when we open at the pouch of Douglas, you can be able to appreciate the ovary, but the bowel has pushed the ovary to the pelvic wall and it has buried it. Now, the moment we start releasing the rectum, now the ovary is visualized. Unfortunately, in these cases, you'll find also the fallopian tube will be greatly affected. On the opposite side, you'll be able to appreciate that uh, the ovary was completely buried and it was really worse on the left side than it's on the left side. And you can clearly see the ovary completely buried there. After completely athesiolysis, now the ovary is well visualized. And if you antivert the uterus, you can be able to clearly 
identify the ovaries. And um, uh, for this case, salpingectomy was performed as we found that the, um, uh, the fallopian tube were greatly affected. In hydrosampings, it's clearly been found out that tubal factor account for approximately 25% of cases of infertility. And hydrosampings accounts to be one of the, um, the extreme cases of tubal factors, which it will account to about 10 to 30% of tubal diseases. Patients who present with the hydrosalpinges, they have lower implantation rate in pregnancy, and also they are going to present with lower rates in assisted reproductive technology. So what are the treatment options for hydrosalpings? The current guidelines indicate that laparoscopic salpingectomy is an important treatment option prior to IVF. Are there alternative options? Yes, the alternative option like salpingostomy. Unfortunately, the patient who undergoes salpingostomy as much they have um, an advantage of spontaneous, uh, possible spontaneous pregnancy, they have about 10% risk of ectopic. In five randomized control trials that were performed, it was found out that women, um, it was found out that uh, the women who actually underwent salpingectomy had higher clinical ongoing pregnancy rates as compared to those who went through tubal occlusion aspiration and those had no treatment whatsoever. This role in laparoscopic tuboplasty and uh, tubal reconstruction surgery it can be an option uh, prior to IVF for those patients who opt for, um, for tuboplasty. But the, this will be reserved for patients who have mild tubal diseases. And some of the options for tubal reconstruction, it depends on the location of the um, occlusion. If the occlusion is, uh, is proximal to the uterus, laparohistroscopic annulation is an option of choice, whereby this will lead to minimal mobility and the reasonable success, um, success rate in recannulation that has been found. In a Canadian task force case series of 168 uh, women with proximal tubal block, it was found out that 54% uh, um, had success rate per tube, but patient-wise, 62% had successful recannulation state. And this now translated to even a better result of cumulative conception rate, whereby in two years, 43% went to um, spontaneous um, uh, conception, where those who had uh, unilateral obstru uh, obstruction, they even had higher um, uh, rates of conception. But for those patients who have now distal tubal occlusion, which um, um, have better success rate, laparoscopic fibroplasty and neosalpingostomy remains an op as an option. And this will be preserved for or reserved for patients who are below 35 uh, years of age. And there's minimal to moderate degree, uh, and those with minimal to moderate degree of tubal injury. What about tubectomy reversal? This has been shown to increase success rate of pregnancy and is a possible option prior to IVF. Now, some of the factors that affect success rate of tubectomy reversal include um, the type of sterilization, whereby laparoscopic sterilization has higher chance of conception. Um, patients who have higher, um, um, a longer length of more than four centimeters have about 50% success rate. And uh, patient, uh, who have undergone ismath to ismath or ismath amputary anastomosis have about 50% success rate. A patient presented to us again here. Uh, this patient uh, did not, um, uh, could not afford option of ART treatment and uh, opted for tubectomy reversal. We start by refreshing the distal and the proximal end of the uh, the fallopian tube. And uh, once uh, the distal end patency has been confirmed, anastomosis is performed with the uh, vicryl suture 80. And um, after the anastomosis, we proceed and do um, chromoperturbation to confirm patency. And for this, you can actually uh, be able to appreciate patency test is, um, is positive. And this patient went ahead to conceive spontaneously. Laparoscopic myomectomy, yes, we know that um, uterine fibroid cause, uh, affects fertility and of importance, uh, mucosal fibroid negatively affects fertility. 
Still, we also find that sub, um, intramural fibrous more than four centimeters may negatively affect uh, or influence fertility. How does this happen? Therefore, the reduced ability of embryo implantation in case of submucosal fibroid and this creation of a hostile environment where development of embryo is actually affected. So there's no role of a, uh, or little effect of subseroso uh, fibroids on fertility. Um, again, it depends on the size of the fibroid. So excision of submucosal myoma seem to restore fertility with pregnancy rate after surgery getting back to similar to those of normal controls. Some of the advantages of laparoscopic myomectomy, not only laparoscopic myomectomy, but laparoscopic procedure is there's going to be reduced hospital stay, reduced postoperative stay, there's reduced blood loss, and there's faster recovery. For all our patients who are booked for uh, laparoscopic myomectomy, it's always mandatory for us to do a diagnostic uh, hysteroscopy. And for this particular case, you can see there were multiple um, intracavitary uterine fibroid. There was a type 0, there was a, uh, a type 1, and there was a type 3. So we felt that this patient would greatly benefit from laparoscopic myomectomy. We started by uh, making an incision on the anterior wall of the uterus. And after excising the type two fibroid, we opened into the, um, into the cavity. And after opening to the cavity, we were able to excise the type one and the type zero. And you can appreciate the size of the type zero. This was large. For hysteroscopic resection, this will need um, a really good hand and um, good skill in, um, in hysteroscopic resection. Ectopic pregnancy, uh, surgical treatment for tubular ectopic pregnancy laparoscopy still remains as a gold standard in different setup has been found to be cost effective uh, compared to the medical treatment. Laparoscopic salpingectomy versus salpingostomy has similar outcome and uh, methotrexate versus uh, laparoscopic salpingostomy also has been found to have similar uh, result. So in terms of uh, laparoscopic management of ectopic, the first thing you identify once you insert your telescope is hemoperitoneum, which confirms the diagnosis. After suctioning of the hemoperitoneum, the, uh, the affected fallopian tube comes into, uh, into vision, and you're able to determine if uh, the patient will benefit from sapingostomy or sapingectomy. It's also important for you to inspect the contralateral fallopian tube as um, uh, if patient has desire for, um, for natural conception, you want to be very conservative in terms of uh, preservation of fallopian tubes. Now, as I had mentioned, it's not going to be fair for me not to um, uh, mention about endometriosis. Endometriosis will not uh, fit in our today's presentation, but is there a role of laparoscopy and uh, infertility enhancement in endometriosis? I'm just going to... Um, uh, read this out. Surgery for deep-seated endometriosis has been accompanied by high rates of spontaneous conception and successful pregnancy and does not seem to decrease the chances of conception in IVF. So that means there's role of laparoscopy in endometriosis. What about in endometrioma? In endometrioma, it has been found out that in, uh, in cystectomy, endometrioma may not improve assisted fertility result and may further decrease the number of oocytes uh, in affected females. So you need to have a good case selection in terms of who gets to benefit from surgery for endometriosis. Diagnostic laparoscopy, absolutely there's role of diagnostic laparoscopy, but if you're going to use lap, um, laparoscop uh, laparoscopy for, uh, diagnost uh, for diagnostic of fertility, you need to preserve, laparoscopy should be the final step of investigation. Look at up to 50% of infertile women with unsuspected pelvic pathology. This has been detected at the time of laparoscopy, either accidentally or incidentally. So in conclusion, there's no single non-invasive screening test um, that is high successful in predicting either the presence or absence of pelvic disease. And this is what makes uh, laparoscopy be quite superior. Therefore, many factors might be considered in the decision to perform laparoscopy. And because success rate of infertility treatment plans are highly dependent on maternal age, uh, early diagnosis, and timely intervention, these factors need to be considered to achieve good outcomes.
Um, these are some of my references. I, I really want to once again thanks Aegis for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. And in Kenya, we say Asanteni Sana. <laughs>